Okay, uh, that sort of leads into the next topic here, uh, which is the diagnostic workup uh, for these patients and uh, the importance of um, and considerations of uh, alternative uh, diagnoses. So, uh, Jim, are there particular ways we should be going about uh, the diagnosis in and in an effort to minimize the number of cases that are delayed uh, in diagnosis or misdiagnosed? Yeah, well, so I, I do think, I, I, I'm sitting at a, from a perspective of a person in a peripheral nerve clinic. So everybody I'm seeing is pre pretty much coming in with peripheral neuropathy. So my workup will probably more, be more intensive and extensive than many people's. But I would do nerve conductions in EMG. Most amyloidosis is going to be an exonal neuropathy. There are, will be exceptions where they'll be more demyelinating. That will be helpful. Most in their length dependent. I like to do an autonomic reflex screen showing autonomic involvement. Most people won't have that at their disposal, but it's a very good way of showing certain manifestations that would be typical of amyloid neuropathy. I like to do quantitative sensory testing. It shows small fiber involvement, unmyelinated fiber involvement, large fiber involvement. These are all very useful things. I like to do an abdominal fat pad uh, biopsy, and I like to do the genetic testing. And I'm also looking for other types of neuropathy. I'm not just keying in on amyloid. I'm trying to find out the cause of the neuropathy in general. Um, there are neuropathies that can mimic amyloidosis. Diabetes, I think, can be a mimic of amyloidosis. As we've mentioned, CIDP can mimic amyloidosis. And many other neuropathies early on can look like amyloid. And I sort of made that point earlier, but it really has been striking to me that early on in amyloidosis, it looks a lot like the idiopathic uh, sensory motor axonal neuropathies that we can see from a myriad of different causes. Michael, uh, EMGs, uh, exactly what nerve fibers are we testing and is it possible that they can, you can have a normal uh, battery of EMG results when there is uh, early familial TTR amyloid? Yeah, so EMG nerve conduction tests large myelinated sensory and motor fibers. Um, and so the classic pattern would be a distal length dependent neuropathy. Uh, and that's very common for all neuropathies and also very common for HATTR. Uh, in addition, there are other types of fibers that can't be captured uh, with nerve conduction uh, testing. And those are the small unmyelinated nerve fibers. And patients with uh, involvement of those fibers often present with pain, uh, uh, burning dysesthesias in the feet. Uh, and that, that's a hallmark of small fiber neuropathy. And that can be diagnosed by skin biopsy, quantitative sensory testing, uh, or, or other techniques, but uh, those are the two main ones. And at Hopkins, we tend to use skin biopsy with intraepidermal nerve fiber density, and that can have the advantage in that you can also detect amyloid in the skin. So you have the potential to test two things at once. So if a um, neurologist based in the community is interested in doing um, skin punch biopsies, uh, how would they get those properly assessed? And then parenthetically, what is the sensitivity of these biopsies for amyloid in proven cases? So there are a number of labs that now offer this as a diagnostic test. Uh, so I think it's easy to perform in the community. In terms of the sensitivity or the hit rate uh, with detecting amyloid, it, it, it's uh, very much dependent on the patient population. So if you have symptomatic patients with HATTR, upwards of 80% of skin biopsies will be positive for amyloid. So in my experience, it's better than a fat pad biopsy. Uh, of course, if you look at asymptomatic patients and how you define asymptomatic, 
uh, the hit rates lower. So in a group of patients in their early 50s with some symptoms, maybe some tingling, but not overt neuropathy, uh, we saw a 20% positive rate. Um, well, an 80% sensitivity is is uh, pretty earth-shattering from my standpoint. Um, at Boston University, with extensive experience with the amyloid, uh, with the abdominal fat pad aspirates, uh, we get 85% sensitivity in AL cases, uh, but in terms of the TTR cases, uh, the familial ones, it's about 50% sensitivity, and then that drops to about 25% in the wild-type TTR cases, so that if you have if you have punch biopsy uh, sensitivities of 80%, that really is phenomenal and yeah. uh, is, quite Is that impressive. two sites, Michael, or three sites? So we typically do three biopsies, yeah. uh, but the distal leg is, has the highest yield. And um, I'm speaking to hereditary disease. Right. So wild type, uh, it's much lower. Yeah. Um, so Jim, uh, what's your experience with um, sural nerve biopsies or other nerves uh, that are clearly involved by the neuropathy because you would anticipate, naively perhaps, that uh, the sensitivity would be quite high for amyloid deposit detection? Yeah, so I, I do think that's exactly right. And it's, it's a similar experience to Michael's. When you have a symptomatic person with neuropathy that you can show on electrophysiological testing on, uh, and on examination, the uh, success rate is 80 plus percent on nerve biopsy. When you have somebody who has a positive genetic test and has anxiety and tingling in their feet and they're very worried that they may have it, uh, it's often very low. It's often, you know, sort of more in the 20% sort of thing. But so I, I'm not very keen on doing a nerve biopsy on somebody who I can't show has a definite neuropathy. Uh, 